obviously a big week uh, surrounding the crack in the last few days, massive as well. But before we get to that, before we get to the festivities of the Winter Classic and everything that came with it, the past week of games included three uh, contests starting on December 27th on the road against the Calgary Flames, a team that the Kraken had only beaten once in their existence before. Make it twice as they defeated the Flames by a score of 2-1 to one on the 27th in the Scotiabank Saddle Dome. Our player of the game making his first start in the National Hockey League since May of 2022. Chris Drieger. Drieger came back 37 staves. Saves, not staves, uh, a 974 save percentage, saving 3.39 goals above expected per evolving hockey. Chris Drieger was excellent in net. There was maybe thoughts of, hey, will he be able to handle this at the NHL level again? You know, it suffered a season-ending injury or a long-term injury uh, in the uh, World Championship a few years ago. Uh, well, a year ago, I apologize. And then had spent some time playing with the Coachella Valley Firebirds, the team's AHL affiliate, came back in and has been the team's backup as Philip Grubauer has been injured and has been was rock solid in this game. Uh, and it seems like Seattle can really count on their backup if need be. Uh, yeah, first start since May 1st of 2022 for Drieger. The Kraken get a nice road win against the Flames, something that's been really hard for them to do against Calgary. Both of the wins, both of those two wins against the Flames in Seattle's NHL existence have come on the road in Calgary. None of them at home at Climate Pledge Arena. Speaking about Climate Pledge Arena, the Kraken returned home on the 29th of December, the last game ahead of the Winter Classic and the last game of the calendar year of 2023, defeating the Philadelphia Flyers by a score of 2-1 to one in overtime. Seattle had to overcome a deficit. They conceded early uh, as the Flyers penalty kill. The Flyers penalty kill has been great all year long, uh, scoring a ton of shorthanded goals, and they do that again here in Seattle. Uh, Kraken defenseman Vince Dunn ties it up in the third period with a bomb from the blue line. Uh, neither team able to go ahead, so it sends us to overtime. Both of the teams get the standings point. It wouldn't be Seattle who goes home with the loser point. No, they go home with both points as defenseman Justin Schultz, who has been an on and off healthy scratch over the past few weeks as Riker Evans has stayed up with the Kraken, uh, wins the game in overtime going five hole on former Everett Silvertips goaltender uh, Carter Hart and winning that game. Our player of the game, you're going to hear a lot of goalies. I apologize only a little bit. Joey, Joey Decord strong in this one, 27 saves, a 964 save percentage and 0.6 goals save above expected. Joey continues to be strong and really his saves in this one kept the Kraken in the game and allowed them to be able to tie it up late in that third period and then win the game in the overtime period uh, to give the Kraken both points from that contest. So that led us, well, and then the photo of the game here by Liz Walter, you can see the bench reaction to that win. A rare emotion from head coach Dave Haxtall as his players got off the bench to celebrate with defenseman Justin Schultz ahead of that one. Uh, and just a really nice victory overall for the Kraken to defeat the Flyers and go into this game against the Golden Knights in the Winter Classic with momentum. An eight-game point streak, a four-game winning streak. They would continue that on January 1st, the New Year's Day of 2024, when they would defeat the Las Vegas Golden Knights by a score of three to nothing, a shutout against the reigning Stanley Cup champions in T-Mobile Park, a packed T-Mobile Park. In fact, 47,313 of you beautiful people packed the ballpark to witness history, the Kraken's first outdoor game, uh, obviously, in their three-year career. Um, and then just a magnificent celebration of Seattle's sports teams uh, really started out strong in the first period. Ellie Tolvanen, a tip-in goal against uh, Golden Knights goaltender Logan Thompson. In the second period, a bomb from Will Borgen catches Thompson off guard to double the lead early into that frame. And then in the third period, Yanni Gord uh, strips Paul Cotter in Cotter's own defensive zone. Gord is then able to hammer home his own rebound against Thompson, snap his goalless streak, and help put an exclamation point as Joey Decord. I mean, we're going to keep talking about him, so please don't get sick of him. 35 saves, four number 35 in this win. He's our player of the game, of course. Uh, 35 saves, obviously the 100% save percentage, and 2.7 
goal 2.27 goal save above expected is the first shutout in winter classic history only the fifth shutout in outdoor game history in the nhl the sixth shutout in kraken history um and these third most saves ever in an outdoor game by a goaltender so joey decord rock solid one of those saves here made on jack eichel superstar jack eichel uh had a breakaway attempt the cord says no uh, Jack Eichel had another attempt back door wide open. The court said no with a brilliant glove save. And then our second photo of the game here, which there was a ton of incredible photos to look at. We will run this so you can go and check them all out uh, on our socials. Yanni Gord celebrates his third period goal to put the final goal on the scoreboard and really add the exclamation point to that one. So an excellent game day, an amazing, incredible atmosphere at T-Mobile Park and an environment that I'll never forget. Um, our player of the week is normally one person, but considering how well the netminders have done for the crack, and we're going to split it. Joey Decord, as I mentioned, has been rock solid. 62 saves on 63 shots on goal in his past two contests played, helping the Kraken really, um, <laughs> since Philip Grubart has gone down, out, down with injury, really been rock solid, has made all the saves except for the one, all the starts, pardon me, except for the one against Calgary for this Kraken team and has been a rock. <laughs> We've talked about it before. Head coach Dave Haxall rides the hot hand with his goaltenders, and it's been working with Joey Decord. He's been rock solid and has been everything that Seattle's needed in net as they've tried to win these tight games. On the other end of things, I had to go and give Chris Drieger his flowers. Drieger has had a really topsy-turvy career uh, in the NHL going up and down, dealing with starting and not starting. At the end of the day, he comes back. He's able to be a part of this Winter Classic. He was a part of the inaugural season. Head coach Dave Haxel said he's a part of this team as much as anybody. His big game against the Flames was massive, helping the Kraken win only their second game in franchise history against Calgary. So a massive week in the city of Seattle as they hosted the Winter Classic. There were a bunch of different events. Our Circling Seattle Sports and Converge family all over the map here in the Emerald City and the surrounding areas, uh, whether it be, you know, the fan village, uh, the rink build, the media skate was great. I did not fall. I promise you, I did not fall. I had to buy my own skates. It was, you know, it was incredible to experience all of that and to give you a bit of an idea about that. wanted to show you um, the video that we got from the Tacoma uh, refurbishing of Verlo Playfield. This morning we are at a just a quintessential Pacific Northwest morning down in Verlo Park in Tacoma, celebrating the groundbreaking for what will be the new multi-sport court down here, which is um, a partnership between Tacoma Metro Parks, Virginia Mason Franciscan Health, Wonder Foundation, the Seattle Kraken, and the National Hockey League. The City of Tacoma partners with Metro Parks on many, many projects, but this one is really, really exciting because of its connection with the NHL and the Kraken, and everyone's excited about hockey. I grew up playing hockey, so I'm excited to see it here in Tacoma. I'm excited to get out there and play. The NHL and the Kraken really value the expansion of the sport and Metro Parks is really involved and really devoted to creating opportunities across the whole city, especially in underserved areas. When you go into a lot of communities, you don't see a lot of people of color playing hockey. It's about going into Tacoma. It's about going into South Park. It's about going into uh, communities that have not gotten a lot of attention and going in there and being intentional, making sure that everybody in our town, in our area, has access to hockey. Kids need to have fun. Uh, you know, as a dad, I know my kids love having fun, and this is an opportunity for kids here to engage in something outdoors, to get physically active. Whether you make the NHL or whether you just like play street hockey, what you remember is the friendships and, and, and really the camaraderie you build through, through sport. That's the foundation of a lot of our childhoods and, and when you really look back on life, I mean, that's what's important. You have to have a good place and a safe place to be able to do that. The type of infrastructure that is fun and you know feel cool at, it, it, it's special, it means something. I'm hoping the first uh, Tacoma native to play for the Seattle Kraken is on that court right now. That is what I want this legacy to be. To me, the long-term impact is that it's it's people that are falling in love with our sport, yes, but 
they're also just making friends and, and creating their own set of memories that they're going to take through life. It's not just about being physically active, it's about experiencing joy and connection, it's about learning about teamwork and commitment and resilience and literally and metaphorically, you know, how to get up after you fall down. And these are all the things that help our young people become physically, mentally, and emotionally healthier and stronger. And that is what we hope this sport cart will do. So you see a little bit about what was going on with the Winter Classic. Obviously, the game itself yesterday was a massive achievement in and of itself, but there was a ton going on around the city, whether it was the Fan Village, the refurbishing of the Verlo Playfield down in Tacoma. There's a bunch of different events going on right across the street, a Hatback Bar and Grill and Steelheads Alley and Victory Hall. There was a few different concerts. The Head and the Heart performed. Fitz and the Tantrums were performing. Uh, you know, they had different events all around the city. Uh, it's just one mass. This was essentially a little bit like the NHL's version of All-Star Week. All-Star Week and MLB is the marquee event in the regular season for Major League Baseball. For the NHL, it's the Winter Classic. Obviously, the NHL has its own All-Star Week, and that's great. But, you know, the Winter Classic, the way that Seattle responded to this week, there were Vegas fans there. Don't get me wrong. I'm not going to lie to you about that. But the way that the Kraken uh, and, and the city of Seattle and the sports fans really showed out, this town has been a hockey town for years, dating back to the Metropolitans, you know, the Ironmen, the Thunderbirds, all of that stuff. It's all been here. But this and the Kraken, as of late, have really continued to amplify that and make that stronger. This hockey town has grown and grown, and this Winter Classic is only a testament to that. And it was so exciting throughout the course of the week, whether it was, you know, up at T-Mobile Park, showing you the rink build, you know, going out and talking to folks with the NHL like Steve Mayer and Andrew Higgins, uh, you know, being rink signed to talk to Jordan Everly and Jared McCann as they saw the rink for the first time practice day as the sun was hitting the rink uh, and the guys got to go out and skate on it for the first time. It was a remarkable weekend. I can't lie to you. It was excellent to be out here for it all uh, and to see so many, you know, talented folks and individuals and work with so many of those talented folks and individuals uh, to cover Seattle history because that really was. And it wasn't uh, an exaggeration of what was happening. This was history for the city and the foundation of the Kraken as a whole 10 years from now, let alone 2030. This will be this event itself will be remembered because a winter classic doesn't come around uh, as often at all, really. So um, anyway, I digress. We'll get into some of the roster moves here for the Kraken as they continue to roll on right before the winter classic. Uh, the Kraken on the 30th of December reassigned defenseman Riker Evans down to Coachella Valley. He had been getting third line minutes uh, alongside defenseman Brian Dumoulin. And as I mentioned with Justin Schultz, Schultz, he had been uh, the player that had been getting those minutes over Justin Schultz as Schultz had been healthy scratch. But Seattle sends Riker Evans down to Coachella Valley. Had hoped we'd see him for the Winter Classic. Unfortunately not. Uh, Schultz has been playing well as of recently. Uh, and so Riker Evans will get more minutes down with the Firebirds. He'll get top line minutes, which is good for him as he continues to develop. But I really do think sooner rather than later, he will be a full-time NHLer uh, for your Kraken. So... There was that move, and then earlier this morning, the Kraken placed defenseman Jacob Megna on waivers with the intent to reassign him to Coachella Valley. Same thing with Megna. He's been a healthy scratch. He was acquired last year at the trade deadline by the Kraken as a depth defenseman uh, as Seattle you know, prepared for injuries that didn't happen really. Megna only got into a few games last season, hasn't appeared in any for the Kraken this year, appeared in two earlier in the year for the Firebirds on a conditional uh a conditioning loan i apologize this time around is interesting placed on waivers he's a strong defenseman you know i'm not saying he's necessarily a lot better than any of the guys that are currently playing for the kraken right now i am saying though that don't be surprised if there's a possibility that jacob magna gets claimed by one of uh, these teams as he's currently on waivers you know there are teams who are strapped for cap space around the NHL, and they might need a defenseman. They might want to try him out and see what's going on. So it wouldn't necessarily surprise me a ton if Jacob Magna gets claimed. Um, 
So that's that's just the risk you run when you're trying to put guys on waivers and when they've got different um, different sort of things that they have to do to avoid being put on those said waivers. So that was it. Relatively a quiet week for the Kraken um, in terms of roster related moves and all that sort of stuff. Uh, sort of thing you know it wasn't necessarily a quiet week with all the stuff going on around the winter classic and such like that but just to talk to you you know about where this team sits you look at it they've got a nine game point streak uh, which is the longest in franchise history longest than longer than last year when they had the eight game winning streak uh, and really started to sit the set the league on fire you know, a five-game winning streak in this one, having defeated the Golden Knights, uh, a team that, you know, uh, just a little bit older than them in terms of existence, the two youngest franchises in the NHL. Vegas has gotten the better of Seattle in their matchups over the Kraken's existence. Um, you know, the reigning Stanley Cup champions. There's a lot to be happy about right now. The Kraken are playing well defensively. They're structured. Special teams could be a little bit better, but... They're not as, you know, up and down dramatically as they have been throughout the course of the season. You know, you're getting guys back from injury. Andre Burakovsky is back from injury. I'm not going to wood stay healthy, Andre. Uh, Philip Grubauer has been practicing with the team as of late a little bit. He's been working up his workload. Chris Drieger, you know, you've, uh, you've got a reliable backup behind Joey Decord until Grubauer gets back and can take back his spot. Decord has been out of his mind lately in net for Seattle. The Gord, the Tolvin and Gord Bjorkstrand line is incredibly hardworking, and they continue to show that with two goals of the three in the Winter Classic. You know, the four lines seem to really be chugging things out. The Tatar addition to that Beneers and Eberle line has shown some offensive revelation. So there's a lot to be happy about with this Kraken team, and they're still without Jaden Schwartz and pierre Edward Belmar at this current point in time as Schwartz is on long-term injured reserve and Belmar is on injured reserve. So there's things to be happy about with this crack. And, and Schwartz has been practicing as of lately as well. We saw Belmar over the past few days, he's been on crutches. So unfortunately he's still continuing to work back um, from that lower body injury, but there's things to be happy about with this Kraken team. And I talked about it, you know, in the, in the Seahawks segment of the show, it's why I wasn't so ready to make a big change to fire Dave Haxtell to make a big trade and, and, you know, show these guys. I mean, I always thought that was a bunch of insert, whatever word you want to use here. I'm not going to say it because we're on air. Um, you know, it just, they were playing good games. They were playing good hockey. They just had the unfortunate timing of a mistake, you know, in, in the critical moments. And I just didn't think that it was a big change that was going to be necessary. You know, they sit at fourth in the Pacific division right now. They're one point out of a wild card spot. They're playing good hockey. They will get uh, a, a top impact player like Jaden Schwartz back. They'll have the depth for Pierre Edouard Belmar back, you know, so I, I did, this is why I didn't think that was necessary. They didn't make any big, crazy change. They didn't go and make a big trade. They didn't sign anybody outlandish from free agency. I know people wanted to see Phil Kessel. Um, it was just the belief, and you could hear that, whether it was Haxall saying it to the media nearly every game and every practice. It was the players as well saying the same belief and seemingly sharing the same belief. They're doing the right things. They just have to continue to do it, and the puck will eventually bounce in their favor. And now it is, and now you're seeing a little bit of it. I can't guarantee they're going to continue this point streak through the rest of the season. That's essentially impossible. Um, you know, it's just you're seeing it now. You're seeing what this Kraken team can be. They're different than last year's group. They're not going to outscore you to the moon. Um but they're a strong defensive team. They still have that depth. Their goaltending is great at this current point in time. And if they're able to get the, the you know, the special team units just a little bit ticked better um, and with more consistency, then they're a dangerous team that can make noise in the playoffs. These low scoring affairs, these tight grinding gritty affairs are what you see in the Stanley cup playoffs. So, you know, if they continue to do well and they continue to put out these sorts of performances, Look out with all due respect, of course. So um, there's only one game for the crack in this upcoming week. Uh, they will play one more game at home and then they'll go on a long road trip. That game, 
as they sit at a 14 win, 14 lo- 15 win, I apologize, 14 loss, nine overtime loss record, sitting at fourth in the Pacific Division with 39 points on the season, is on January 4th, Thursday, versus the Ottawa Senators, a 7 p.m. Pacific time puck drop. It is Jaden Schwartz bobblehead day to the first 10,000 folks in attendance at Climate Pledge Arena. They'll receive uh, a bobblehead of Jaden Schwartz, who is still on long-term IR. So I don't think we'll see him for his bobblehead night, which is unfortunate, but you never know. I've been surprised before. Uh, And then the Kraken will head out on a lengthy road trip as they look to continue the positive momentum moving forward uh, as we approach the midway point of the season. 